house of the Lord and right here at Timberlake Baptist Church. Did everybody get a bulletin when you came in tonight? Anybody didn't get one? Sean, you're off the hook, brother. You're off the hook. Did everybody got one? <laughs> Anybody got a prayer request they need to make known tonight? Yes. Uh, Billy Angel. Toby's on here, I believe. Uh, I'll follow up on that okay. All right. Yes, Kevin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I believe Kim put that on the prayer list earlier today. Okay. Anybody else? Don't want to miss anybody. Yes, Diane. Then we'll do the Lord in a word of prayer. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, for the opportunity we had to be in your house tonight, Father. We thank you for each one that's come out, Father, tonight. And Father, we know we're going to get a blessing for you tonight as we hear your word uh, after a while, Father, when the pastor teaches a lesson to us tonight. But we pray, Father, you be the many needs on our hearts today, Father, because we call them out to you. Uh, be with uh, Brian Banks for salvation, Amanda Santos for salvation. Henry and Kenny Law for salvation. Maybe Steve Richardson, he's pulled the muscle in his back. Uh, Joshua Dodd, uh, maybe with Wayne Hodges and the family of Claude Ward on the loss of his nephew. Pray you fill the void there in their lives. Father, pray you be still and comfort them now as only you can, Father. Maybe Diane Pritchett, she's going to have an MRI. Maybe uh, Kid, Billy Kinsley has had surgery. Parker Davis also has had surgery. Be with Kim Snow and her, her needs. Be with Teresa's Horvath's unspoken request. And be with uh, Janet Evans, who's also had surgery. We just pray today, Father, you'll reach down and comfort all these people. Touch their bodies, Father, restore their health, Father, and be with them today. Now, Father, we ask you, the pastor tonight, Father, as he brings a message to us, Father, be one we need to hear. That'll help us to walk closer with you. Pray you keep your hands upon him as he leads the flock here at Timberlake Baptist Church. Just give him guidance and wisdom, Father, as we make decisions and we go forth serving you, Father. Thank you for our church attendance and tithing and giving. And it, it, what's been going on here has been great here at Timberlake Baptist Church. We can pray, Father, you continue to grow and you'll continue to meet the need here, Father. Thank you for our deacons and trustees who make decisions uh, for both our church and our grounds and all, Father. We just pray that they'll seek, seek your will, Father, for each decision that they make, Father. We thank you for the uh, new building we're going to be in soon, Father, and the sale of this property also for Blair Construction with the plans, and Mike Maracas, our architect. We pray they'll all work together, Father, and we'll soon be out there on our new land in that new building, worshiping you, Father, in spirit and truth. Thank you for the eternal broadcasting and our WTBI broadcast in Greenville, South Carolina, as we help to spread your gospel around the world, Father. We just pray that th these ministries will be used to your honor and your glory. We also thank you for the ministries here at our church, Believers Bible Institute, our Sunday school, our teachers, our youth ministry, children's churches, and Tuesday Bible study. We thank you, Father, for these ministries. We pray, Father, you keep your hands upon them, that you use each teacher, each student, Father, and you teach us, Father, the things we need to know about you so we can tell others about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and what he can do for them. Thank you, Father, for the peace of Israel. We pray you keep your hands upon your chosen people. We also pray, Father, you'll be with our president, our nation, and our economy. 
that our leaders will look to you, Father, for decisions they need to make as they affect many people, Father. We just pray, Father, you keep your hand upon them, Father, and lead them in the right way. Father, pray you remember the conflicts in the Ukraine, Iran, Iraq, North Korea, Afghanistan, and Syria. We pray, Father, you'll keep our soldiers safe while they're there. Maybe the families that's uh, got loved ones serving overseas, Father, we pray you comfort them, Father, you be with them, uh, that you take care of their needs, Father, and bring our soldiers back home to us. We thank you for our visitors, Father, that come and you've been coming regularly, Father. We just pray, Father, they'll continue to come and worship with us here at Timber Lake Baptist Church. Thank you for our new converts, Father. Help us to teach them in the admonition of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you for hands of glory and that ministry, Father. I pray you uh, bless them as they go and travel and then tell others about you through sign language, Father. We just pray you use them, Father, you honor in your glory. Now, Father, we have many needs for salvation. We're going to lift up to you tonight and pray you'll take care of each one. That you send someone to tell them about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the good things that he can do for them through salvation. Be with Nick Albino, Carl Amos, Wade Ayers and his health, Brandon and parents, Daniel Banks, Rachel Bowen, Jackie Bryant, Ashley Cobb, Tommy and Jamie Connor, Ann Crutchfield, Clint Davis, Terry Deer, who also has cancer, Robert Durr, Lester Dawson, Michelle Doss, Joel Dutton, Tom Hardy, Jesse Horbett, Brandon Godsey, the Horsley family, uh, Jimmy Jones, Billy, Mike, and Stephen King, Ryan and Tyler Kinder, uh, Buster Lewis, Sean McCall, Chase and Haley Minter, uh, Darren Moore, Lauren Myers, Michelle Owen, Bradley Payne, Margaret Poston, Mark and Brian Reagan, Caitlin and Victor Sanchez, Mark and Timothy Shirai, Dylan Smith, Sean and Bobby Stout, Cindy, Kimberly, Madeline, Megan, and Melvin Thompson, Dustin Turner, Bust Buddy Travis, Joyce Watson, Megan Wilson, David Wood, Jessica Wood, Wade Woods, Claude Royal, Tommy Vincent, and Les, Les Young. We pray, Father, as I said, someone will go and break the bread of life with them, Father, and tell them about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and what a new life he can give them, Father, if they'll just serve him. And to get back in church, family, we pray, Father, you'll be with these families. Uh, be with the Cleary family, Buddy and Carol Golden, Cassie and family, DJ and Chelsea and Gary Graham, Kirsten McBride, Jonathan Reed, Glenn Tickle, and Daryl Tickle and family. Father, we have many health needs we'd like to lift up to you tonight, Father. You just pray you take care of each one, Father. Be with Riker Bowen. Be with my, myself, with my kidneys and ears. Be with Deborah Connor and her shoulder, Earl Connor, Jack Dale, Tony Dalton, Logan Drawn. Linda Durham, Joey Serp, be with Roy and Cletus Evans, be Faith Ann Holly, for she's had surgery today, Father, pray you just touch her, especially tonight, Father, and give her comfort, Father. Be with Audrey Hoskins, Maureen Johnson, David and Gail Jones, Beverly Keene, Angeline Merriman, be with Shelby Martin and her knee, be with Gary McCollum, Betty Mitchell, who has blood clots, be with Toby Moore, and with his broken ribs and his doctor's appointment, be with Linda Moorefield, Nancy Newton, Bobby Nichols, who has asthma, Loretta Nichols, who's recovering from surgery, uh, David and Patty Murray, Angie and Billy Oaks, with Ms. Sean Patterson as he gets his wisdom teeth pulled, be with Vince and Sarah Piotta, Alan Cheryl Podobinski, Ann Pruitt, Robert and Vicki Reed, Cindy Rutherford, Nat and Barbara Saunders, uh, Beth Shields and Robin Shields, Mike Smith, Bill and Judy Snow, Carol Tickle, Ricky Toller, Angel Underwood, uh, Anita Warwick, Evelyn Watlington, Leon and Connie Wiles, be with Harold Hansen, who's in rehab. Be with Amy Young. And pray, Father, you take care of each of these individuals. Please watch over, protect them, and keep them safe, Father. For we ask these things in your name. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, as we continue our prayer tonight, Lord, I just want to thank you so much for sending your own son, Jesus, to die on the cross for our sins, Lord. Thank you for our salvation, Lord. Lord, I just thank you for the opportunity to be in your house to be able to study your word and just draw closer to you, Lord. Lord, I just ask you in Jesus' name, just continue to be with our prayer list. Pray that you please uh, be with people who have diabetes, Lord. Pray you please be with Amanda, Ron Allen, Sherry Bray, Logan Carmona, Debbie Eagle, Vicki Miller, David Murray, Kendall Sage Oaks, Rod Rains, Lee Rains, Danny Wark, and Wendy Yancey. I ask you to please touch the people that have COPD. Pray you please be with Mike Mills, Jim Phillips, Shirley Richardson, and Amanda Watson. Lord, please uh, touch the people in nursing homes and be with their other needs. Pray you just please be with Daryl Leffern, <coughs> Susan Carter, Catherine Collins, Susan Dooley, Patsy Ferguson, Curtis Martin, Betty Ray, Francis Robertson, Joyce Thomas, Diane Wagner, uh, Vinell Crane, Michelle Johnson, and Kyle Bowles. Lord, we ask you to please touch them and bless them with more. Please be with the people of all this time with dementia. Pray you please be with uh, Mary Malone and Roy Evans. Please be with our friends, family, and neighbors. I just pray you just touch uh, George Aaron, 
Austin Beverly, John Corn, Vinny Beverly, Carol Barnett, Phyllis Cleary, Annie Cleary, Raymond Cleary, Gene Connor, Janet Evans, Keith Evans, Mark Francisco is back, Amy Ferguson, Mary Hines, George Hilton recovering from surgery, Damian Lewis, Nick Manigan and his heart, Chelsea Martin, Danny Martin, Keith Warfield, Donald Owen, Dale Ray, Florence Richardson, Charlie Robertson, Naomi Robertson, Ricky Shelley has cancer, Glenn and Nancy Slayton, Alan and Shirley Taylor, Vickers family, Garland Watson, Preston Watson, and Jim Wyatt. We ask you to please touch the people who have cancer, Lord. Just pray you just remove it, Lord, and just heal, them, heal the bodies, Lord. Right, Lord, we ask you to please with Jenny Atkins, <coughs> Portia Atkins, Kathy Allen, Bobby Alley, David Bell, Tom Bali, Robin Baker, Scooter Barton, Vanessa Burchett, Eli Burke, Pam Carter, Ronnie Carter, Tammy Cox, Barbara Clarkson, Bill Cooper, Ann Dales, Pat Dalton, Natalie Dickinson, Thomas Dix, Kenan Dunn, Jeremy Ferguson, Marie Foles, Tammy Fries, Amanda Gladder, Abel Gordon, James Griffin, Sherry Grundy, Michelle Hall, Red Hardy, Karen Hilton, Kevin Hicks, Anika Heidnick, Kevin Hopkins, Car uh, Carlton Ho Hoskins, uh, Pamela Hudson, James Hunley, Emerson Keats, Ronnie Lawless, Linda Mahangos, Joseph Miller, Billy Joe Moran, Karen Nation, Tony Phillips, Marie Nestor, Ruth Patterson, Tasha Ritchie, uh, Donald Ricketts, David Robertson, Patricia Robertson, Naomi Robertson, uh, Linda White, Robin Stallings, Jess Waller, Frank Wilkinson, Dave Wilkinson, Lisa Wilson. We ask you to please be with a special request tonight, Lord. Pray you please be with Donna Amos, Jenny Barrett, Skylar Bowen, Matthew Bryan, Tony Curry, Dale Cleary, Joseph Delf, Donald Francis, Manny Graham, Mallory Hamlet, Sean and Teresa Horvitt, Janice Hodges, Katie and Van Hunt, Pastor and Sister Hussey, uh, My Unspokens, Lord, uh, Shelby Martin, Chris McBride, Unspokens, Mike and Diane Mills, Angie Moore, Sean Patterson, Sarah Piotta, Daisy and Nick Fitzpatrick, Betty Price, Bonnie Rains, Skylar Ridney, Amy Saunders, Susan Simmons, Kevin and Kim Snow, Bob Tamson, Eileen Tickle, Hannah Brickman, Landon Walker, Matthew and Chief Williams, Ricky Reed, Daniel Roach, and Lewis Witt. Lord, I pray you just please be with them and bless them in a mighty way. Lord, we just thank you so much for uh, um, everything that you've done, Lord, and just knowing that you're going to answer each one of these requests un uh, unto your precious and holy will, Lord. We ask you to please uh, be with the remainder of this prayer list, and we ask all these things in Jesus' precious name. Our Father, as we continue to pray, Lord, I pray for all the college students, Lord, just be with them and watch over them and put a hedge around them. Pray for Taylor, Becca Clarity, Alyssa Bradley Gossie, Carlton Hoskins, Trimble Langley, Elizabeth Lewis, Joanne Jennings, Dakota McBride, Caleb Moore, Amber Nasilia, Caleb Pooley, Mary Sue Woodson, Tori Underwood, Christine Yancey, Jason Yancey. Lord, I pray for us to continue to keep focusing on soul winning as far as 2023. For the upcoming with Earl Clarkson, Lord, for souls to be saved, lives be changed, pack that house, Lord, and just let the spirit come down for us to continue to grow and be a light to this city, Lord. I pray for the cantata coming up for that, for souls to be saved and lives to be changed. Dr. John Mitchell, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name, Lord, him, and use him in a mighty way as well as us to open our ears and hearts up to continue to fight the good fight of faith. And Dr. Cloud, same. Larry Johnson, homecoming, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name, let that to go well, too. Pray for vacation, VBS, Lord, pray for it to be as far as a lot of kids, souls being saved, and lives being changed, Angie. AG family, Lord, camp free. Lord, I pray for that to continue to grow as far as souls and beings and lives being changed. And Lord, I pray for a lesser August too. Lord, I pray for upcoming as far as the events and everything. I pray for our missions, Lord. I pray for Tim Alders. I pray for Virginia Assembly, Assembly of Independent Baptists, Randy Ashcraft, Bacon, Baptist Missions of Yanda Al, Mando Bala. Virgil Evangelist Earl Clarkson, John Mavis Coleman, Micah Sue Cook, Stan Culler, Keith Cullors, Chris Giacomo, Fortino Dratez, Faye Dykes, David Gibbs, Virgil Ganglin, Jimmy Harris, Larry Henderson, Adrian Hernandez, Lois Howe, Patrick Hubbard, Buster Kinsey, Frank Kinsey, George Kinsey, Nestor Lugan, Bobby Lee, Jimmy Long, Sergio Bajanos, Durham Rescue Mission, Nathan Miller, National Pastors of Cuba, National Pastors of Pakistan, Don, Don, Don John, and Linda Mitchell. Alan Nye, Mike Peckoff, Michael Peckoff, David Rawson, Ken Ream, Evangelist Jeff Worley, David Ritchie, Demetrio Rodrigo, Roloff Ministries, Jason Serval, Tabernacle Children's Home, Howard Williams, David Weiss, Lord, I ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
We'd like to remember tonight the pastors and the evangelists that we're able to support. And so we'll have <coughs> Scott A.G., Jamie Adams, Joe Arthur, Bobby Brooks, Melvin Campbell, Kenneth Cloud, also Jeff Chapman, Scott Dean, Carlton Duck, Larry Fitzgerald, Jerry Flanagan, also Jerry Foley, Donnie Glass, Frank Gooch, Mike Harp, Jason Holly, also Wayne Hudson, Larry and Donna Johnson, John Kenzie, Derek and Tim Kaiser, Terry St. John, also Steve Lamb, Carl Martin, Dave, Dave Peters, Dan Shelley, Tim Shelley, Davy Shelton, Mark Snowden, also Donnie Stevens, Philip Stout, the Tobert family, and also Brian Warren and Jeff Woods. May we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this opportunity you've given us. We pray for each one tonight, Lord, that made the way out. We pray, Lord, that each one that came out tonight could say it was good to be in the house of the Lord. We pray that your word will touch our hearts tonight, Lord, that we'll open up our minds and take your word and let it find a lodging pl place in our hearts, Lord, to help us to walk each day and to be drawn closer to you and be a better witness to you. Father, we pray also you'd supply all the needs of the evangelists and the pastors that we support. Lord, their needs are many, and we just pray, God, through you, they're able to do all things. So we ask you, Lord, to take care of their needs. Help each one of them, Lord, as they carry out their duties each and every day, trying to spread the gospel. Father, we love you and thank you all that, for all that you do for us, keeping us safe. Keep your loving hand upon us, Lord, and continue to bless our church. That it might prosper and grow and always be a shining light in this community. We love you and thank you most of all for loving us. Forgive us of our failures and our sin. For us in the name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, whose name is above all names. Amen. Amen. All right, let's take your hymn books and turn to page number 55. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, the time shall be no more, and morning breaks eternal bright and fair. All three verses are when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Page number 55. <laughs> The trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair. When the Savior verse shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, Don't forget, everything comes in, comes in for our Wednesday night fun, and boy, we've got a, got a big, 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 big April coming up, all out in April. We'll have Earl Clarkson on April the 2nd at 11 a.m., then our Easter cantata then came the morning on April the 9th, then April the 16th, Dr. John Mitchell, and morning and the evening service, and then a week later, revival, with Dr. Kenneth Cloud and his wife Brenda, April the 23rd through the 26th. So we got a lot, a lot coming up in April, so let's get ready. Amen? Amen. All right, as we go to the Lord in the word of prayer, 
Father, we thank you, Lord, for tonight. We thank you for your blessings and the privilege to be here. I ask you to take this offering and bless it to the building of Timberlake Baptist Church and your kingdom. And we ask you, Lord, to help us, Lord, to have a great April. Lord, we'll see many souls saved. We'll see Christians draw close to you. We'll see a real revival in our church. Now, bless this offering to give to the giver in Christ's name. Amen. All right, take your Bibles and turn to Nehemiah chapter number 9 as we, for the next six weeks as we prepare for a big month in April, we're going to talk about adoring the Savior, adoring the Savior. Nehemiah chapter 9 beginning in verse 4. Here in this passage, <clears throat> y'all pray for this frog that will jump away. Here in this passage, we are, we're getting ready to hear the people of Israel pray after they began to grow in the Lord. And they built the walls. The nation of Israel is coming back to its prominence. And there's been a revival. People are excited. That's what we've got to get back in our churches, some excitement. Say amen. Right. The devil has robbed us of that with COVID. He's took our excitement, our joy away from us. We've got to get it back. We've got to get a smile on our face and pep in our step. And the purest characteristic that is visible from a growing child of God is that they adore the Lord. They adore the Lord. They, they, they can't talk about him enough. They can't talk to him enough. They can't serve him enough. If you start reigning backwards, it's not going forward, then you're not growing. You're dying. I'm afraid a lot of Christians are dying and don't realize it. They don't realize that they're suffering from a lack of joy. Now, I saw for the first time Baylor's eyes. This is the first time I've seen them, like a cat, I guess. She didn't open her eyes until, she, her eyes around until tonight. And she kept looking up at her mama. You know why? Because she adores her mama. Say amen. And that's the way we ought to be looking to God, with eyes of adoration, uh, bright, glowing, that's impossible to be overlooked. When people see us, they see a difference in us than they do everybody else because the glow of God is reflecting off of our face. When you have been in the presence of the Lord, His glory shows all around you and through you and all about you. His glory is sweet. His glory is loving. His glory is encouraging. And most of all, it's revealing who He is through you. That should be our goal. Now, the adoration of the Lord in this passage is a glorious and a beautiful one. Uh, if anyone slows down long enough to see it, hear it, and absorb it, it'll change you in just these few, uh, these nine verses here will change you, or 11 verses rather, will change you if you'll just take time over the next few Wednesday nights to let it absorb and sink in and let it uh, mold you into who you ought to be. Tonight we're going to talk about a proper name. Look at verse number 4, and we'll look through verse, verses 4 and 5. Then stood up upon the altars of the Levites, Jeshua, and Bani, Cadmiel, Shebani, Bani, Shebea, Bani, Chemia, and cried with a loud voice unto the Lord their God. And the Levites, Jeshua, Cadmiel, Bani, Hashbaniah, Shebiah, Hajiah, Shebaniah, and Pathia. Don't make me do that again. <laughs> and said, Stand up and bless the Lord, your God, look at this, forever and ever. Blessed be thy glorious what? Thy glorious name. Now, folks, if his name's not glorious to me and you, God's in trouble because we're the ones he's redeemed. We're the ones that have been saved, born again, washed in the blood, hell proof and heaven bound. Uh, we ought to realize how glorious his name is. Right. And then it says, which is exalted above all, blessings and all praise. Folks, God has got to be first. He has got to be above all in our life. You see, God wants to hear our voices not just making chatter, but he wants to hear our voices praising his name. 
thankful voices, voices of appreciation, adoration, accolades. The praise of these Levites was described as loud. Now, I know that hurts some of y'all's feelings. And, but I got news for you. Heaven is not going to be a quiet place. If you think you're going to go to heaven and go to a quiet place, you, you're wrong. Absolutely dead wrong. Listen, just think for just a moment. If there's as many angels in heaven as there are stars. Think about this now. Many angels in heaven as there are stars. And they all got six wings. I can't even move my arms like fat flapping. Say amen. Makes a little noise. Can you imagine all them angels in heaven? With their it's not going to be quiet in heaven. Say amen or amen. Right. Some of y'all going to be so excited to be there, you're going to turn the ecclesiastical cartwheels across heaven. I can't wait to see. I cannot wait to see Steve Rains turn an ecclesiastical cartwheel. <laughs> That's what I'm looking forward to. Say amen. Amen. <laughs> hey, we won't just be praising God on the inside. It's going to be on the outside too. Say amen. Some of you are going to be shocked to see some people there. Some people are going to be shocked to see you there. And there's going to be a lot of rejoicing going on, a lot of praising God. It's not going to be a quiet place. And look, I know people say quiet is reverence, and you ought to be reverent in church. Don't you misinterpret what I'm fixing to say. But you know, it's not irreverent to say amen. It's not irreverent to say glory to God. It's not irreverent to say hallelujah. It's not irreverent to praise God in his house. It's in order. Say amen. Right. It's in order. And they were not ashamed that they were once captives and now free. They were indeed passionate from their hearts because they knew what it was to be captives back under an evil regime that done many evil things to the Israelites and put burdens on them heavier than they could bear. They were free. They were back in Jerusalem. The walls were being rebuilt. Their nation was coming back. Folks, that's what we need tonight in America. I appreciate the missionary coming in some night. Never met him in my life. Didn't have never seen him before. I thought the mafia was moving in. I really did. I thought, who's all these people coming in here? But it's him and his family. And uh, come find out, he and I know a good preacher friend together. And he was coming back from uh, North Carolina, and he, they thought they'd stop by and visit with us. They'd heard about us. I'm glad it was good. Amen. Amen. Glad it was good there. And, uh, but, you know, it's a blessing to know that people are going, not only start churches around the world, but America needs churches. Uh, Colorado needs a church. I know another fellow in New York City. His name is David Pharaoh. And uh, he's going to New York, just above New York City, to build, uh, build a church in upstate New York. And uh, they need it there desperately. And, folks, we need to start seeing churches. We need our nation to come back to God. Say amen. amen. And it's not going to happen in silence. It's not going to happen in silence. So people have to start rejoicing, praising God, giving God a good name. Amen. Giving God a good name. We live in a day when Christians are silent in praising God, and the world uses his precious name not in praise but in profanity. You can't hardly watch TV without God's name being cursed and used in vain. Profanity dishonors God's name. It uses it in vain as a byword. But praise honors God's name. And the Hebrew word Jehovah or Yahweh is a name that was shared with the children of Israel in a spiritually intimate way. You were very careful how you said Jehovah. Amen? Very careful. And you made sure it was said in a positive manner because he was intimate to the children of Israel when they were close to him. And Jehovah is used 6,800 times in the Old Testament. I dare you to go home and count them. 6,800 times in the King James Bible. And if you see the words Lord or God in capital, all capitals in the King James Bible, if you find another Bible, you'll be ashamed. Right. Y'all are a dead crowd tonight. In the King James Bible, if it's capitalized L-O-R-D or G-O-D, it is in the, he it's the Hebrew word Jehovah, if you go look it up. It's the Hebrew word Jehovah, almighty, all precious, all knowing, all caring, all compassionate.
passionate Chova. It's like saying your mama or your daddy who's intimate to you and you love them precious. They do this to honor God in every effort to make sure that they don't profane his name. Now let me tell you, the, the biggest sin most Christians have is not they're going out cussing in God's name, no. So they don't even say his name at all. They don't praise him. They don't glorify him. They don't give him glory. I had a young man come in tonight and we'll take a few minutes of my time just to tell some good things God had done. That's what we ought to be doing. That's what we ought to be talking about. How good God's been. I was sitting at home getting ready for church tonight and my phone rang and said, Faith Ann Holly. I said, what row? So I picked the phone up and it was Faith Ann. She was real low. I said, how you doing? She said, I don't feel good, but I'm doing good. I said, I don't understand it, but I'll accept it. I'll take that. She threw the bag has been in surgery, but she, everything went well. And she wanted to praise God and thank the church for praying for her. She said she was scared, nervous, and upset till we prayed for her. And then all the nervousness went away. Folks, listen, you've got to praise God when he does something good for you. And if somebody's in the, in the hospital room just had the neck worked on, uh, I think I'd be asleep. And, but she picked up the phone and she called her pastor and wanted her church to know how much she appreciated praying. And God had answered our prayers. Folks, we've got to praise his name. We've got to honor him in every possible way. The name Jehovah means simply this, above all others. Above all others. In our life, he's got to be above all others. You're proving that in your li life tonight because you're here. Say amen. amen. You're here. Exodus 3.14 says this, And God said unto Moses, I am, that's a state of being verb, he always has been, always will be. Say amen. amen. I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. Now, if God sent Moses to the children of Israel, I don't care if you're going to school, I don't care if you work, I don't care if you're out shopping, God has probably sent you to somebody today. He's going to send you to somebody tomorrow. And God has got people planned for you to meet during the day. Make sure everybody you meet knows who your Lord is and how much you love him. And you honor his name. He's above all things in your life. I am that I am means that Jehovah is absolutely sovereign over all things. You know, if we could just get a grasp on that, we'd stop being nervous. We'd stop worrying about things. We'd stop letting things get to us. Now, I know y'all are perfect, but I'm not. And I let things get to me sometimes. I let things get to me just about as bad as uh, Earl Connor lets things get to him. You know, I'm about as bad as he is. Keep talking, big boy. But anyway, my point is this. I let things get to me, but when I stop and think God's in control and everything's going to work out, why am I worried about this? Why am I worried about something God's already got taken care of? I don't need to be fretting when he's sovereign over all. And that's what we have to believe. No one else can say that they are sovereign over all. We can't say that anybody else is sovereign over all. It's kind of funny, all these things that, I tell you, Washington stays in the uproar all the time just trying to, to, to take all the uh, crazy things the president said and make them make sense. <laughs> Amen or all me. And, and, and listen, you know, it makes you wonder, someone who's in control up there? Say amen. I mean, that's just about what makes you think. But have you ever wondered who's in control of heaven? No. Because you know God's sovereign over all. He's sovereign over everything. Jehovah of the Old Testament is the Jesus of the New Testament and the Holy Spirit of today. They're all the same person. Now, real quickly, you believe that? I got some most front property in Arizona. First of all, A, a lofty name. Look at Philippians chapter 2, verse 9. Wherefore God hath highly exalted him, that's Jesus, and giving him, Jesus, a name which is above every name. But the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, of things in heaven, of things on earth, of things under the earth. And let me stop right there. You say, well, what do you mean under the earth? That's where hell is. Right. Study your Bible. Hell's in the center of the earth. So everything in heaven, everything in earth, everything in hell, everything ought to praise the name of Jesus Christ. 
We say, well, why would they praise the name of Jesus Christ in hell? Because 2,000 years ago, he went down there and led captivity captive and took all the believers out, and then hell just took over the whole sinner. They've seen him face to face. They've seen what he can do. He is the Savior. He is the Messiah. That ought to make you say hallelujah right there. Amen. Now listen to me. Then it says, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We must remember the Father sent the Son. God exalted Jesus as the Son of God. And don't ever take for, sake, uh, for, for granted when the Bible says God's only begotten because he's the only one God had. You've got the Mormons trying to tell you that the devil and Jesus were brothers. Uh, they had too much to eat or drink or something before they went to bed and had a bad nightmare when they thought that one up because there's only one only begotten Son, that's Jesus Christ. The Father gave Jesus the highest position of responsibility in all of history. And it's true to whom much is given, much is required, but it's also true to whom is faithful and responsible, much honor is earned and given. That's why Jesus today sits at the right hand of the Father on the throne in heaven because Jesus came and did for us what nobody else in all the annals of history could ever do. He died for our sins. The Father expects all men to honor the name of the person of the Lord Jesus Christ for the sacrifice he freely gave. You want to have a revival? Start thinking about what Jesus did for you, what he suffered for you. It'll change everything you think about. It'll make you love him and appreciate him more than you could ever imagine. The greatest honor we can give the Father is to accept the Son as our Lord and Savior. If you've done that, say amen. amen. Say you've honored the Lord. All right, B. Not only is, does he have a lofty name that nobody else can have, but it says pray in his name in 1 Corinthians 1, 2. Unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, in them that are sanctified, who've been saved and set apart to serve God, in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, called to be saints. Now let me say something real quick. Uh, I don't know where they get this idea only a few people are supposed to be saints. If you're washed in the blood, honey, you're a saint. Say amen. Nobody got to vote you in. Nobody got to put your name up. No, no. Everybody that's saved is a saint. We're all saints. That's what it says right here in this verse. Called to be saints. And with all that in every place call upon the name of the Lord Jesus our Lord, Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. Now, we are made holy by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are sanctified, set apart for the fulfillment of the will of God through your life. That's why you're called to be a saint in this world we're living in. You're to be a separated servant of God. That's all a saint is. They're separated into God, doing what God wants them to do everywhere they go. And the only way we can fulfill the will of God in, in, in our life after salvation is by having a very strong prayer life. Folks, that's why I'm, I print you a prayer list every week. We have prayer before every service. We take prayer requests before every service. You've got to have a strong prayer life to be a great saint, a great servant, sanctified to serve God. The only way we can fulfill the will of God in our life is to pray and ask yourself the question tonight, and here's what I want you to ask yourself. How strong is your prayer life? I didn't ask you if you had one, because you can have one and not be much of one. But the prayer life you've got, how strong is it? Is it something you depend on every day you live? Wendy told me the other day she, her prayer life had gotten better. I said, what do you mean your prayer gotten better? Because the older you get, the worse you drive, the more I pray. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of prayer life you got, okay? How strong is your prayer life? That's the question tonight. Is it weak? Is it strong? Is it what you, Look, is it something you depend on? Is it something other people are depending on? I've had people call me all week who don't go to Timberlake. They live in other areas. Call, pray for so-and-so. Pray for so-and-so. Pray for so And I, I wonder, well, why would they call me? They think I'm praying. So I think I better be praying. Say, I better be. I better have a strong prayer life. 
Not, not only are they depending on God, but they're depending on me to pray for them and with them. But the Bible says to agree on earth is what? Bound, Bound, Bound in heaven. So it's a, it's a precedent to that in the Word of God. Look at John 14, 12. Verily, verily, that means truly, truly, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, that's Jesus, the works that I do, he, that's me and you, shall do also. Now, in answering that question about how strong is your prayer life, uh-oh, you know what determines how strong your prayer life is? Are they being answered? We just spent five weeks on eight hindrances of prayer. Y'all think I'm doing all this by accident? No, it's on purpose. I'm trying to teach you something. When we have a strong prayer life, our prayers get answered. If it's weak, they don't get out. Prayer is not just talking to God. It's also living for God, keeping your life pure so those prayers can go up and be answered. You know what that's going to catch you is when you catch yourself doing something you ain't got no business. Now, I know y'all never catch yourself doing anything in your business because y'all are perfect, but I'm not. And I catch myself doing something I ain't got no business, and I'm like, uh-oh, did I just hinder somebody's prayers? Did I hinder an answer to somebody's life? Did I do something stupid that's not only going to hurt me, but everybody around me? And everybody dependent on me. Because I'm here to tell you, somebody's dependent on you. Your spouse, your children, your boss, your neighbor. Say amen. amen. A lot to think about, isn't it? A lot to conjure in your mind. He says, greater works than these shall he do because I go to my Father. In other words, he's going to send the Holy Spirit that lives within you. The more you read your Bible, the more the Holy Spirit can talk to you. The more you can talk to the Holy Spirit in prayer. And the more can be done. Listen, we ought to be praying for great things to be done. We shouldn't be satisfied with mediocre. Mediocre don't cut it. If, me, if all we've got is mediocre, that's not saying much about a great God. And there's nothing wrong with a great God. If things are mediocre, it's not the God. It's the servants. And folks, we've got to get serious about being servants and about being faithful to God. Then it says, And whatsoever you shall ask in my You pray in, you know why we say in Jesus' name, amen? Because the Bible said do it. That's how you, you say a prayer. I'm kind of nervous when people pray and don't say in Jesus' name, amen, at the end. Who are they praying to? Have you ever mailed a letter and didn't put the address on it? Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot y'all are perfect. I do it all the time. I go to the mailbox and I think, Lord, here's a letter from strength for today. And I look at it and return to sender because there ain't no address, nothing written on it. I just mailed an empty envelope. How stupid. That's dumb. When you send a letter, you put an address on it, right? because you know who you want to send it to. Well, the address comes at the end of every prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. let it be so. And amen means let it be so. In Jesus' name, let it be so. Because of him, through him, by him, let it be so. Now, then it says that that which you've prayed will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you, you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Now, if you don't say amen right there, somebody needs to stick you with a needle. Make you holler. Say amen. If we just pray more, God would do more. But when we pray less, God's forced to do less. I don't want to do less. I want to do more. I mean, I got to blame the revival a year ago. When Dr. Cloud left, I've learned a long time ago, if you don't book them when you got them, you ain't going to get them. So I'd already booked Dr. Cloud for the end of the month. Well, then all along around sometime mid-January, poor little brother Earl called me up so pitiful. Brother Walter, you think you might could use me on April the 2nd? I said, Earl, come on. Say amen or amen. Come on, Earl. You, you come on any time you want to. Come on. He said, okay, I'll be there. Then last week, I'm sitting in my office doing something, probably writing a book, and my phone went bing. Y'all's phone go bing. Mine did, and I looked up John Mitchell. I said, uh-oh, what's thing gone wrong now? So I hit the button. John said, Brother Walter, do you think there's any way in the world you can use me April, I think it's the 16th? I said, Earl Clarkson, first Sunday. Choir, 
second Sunday. John Mitchell, third Sunday. Ken Cloud, fourth Sunday. Where's Walter Yancey? <laughs> Somebody said, you got to be on vacation. No, ain't no vacation. Take care of them four. Say amen on me. Ain't no way in this world I'll be on no vacation. But hey, whatever the Lord wants, say amen. And I'm excited. I mean, some people would say, well, they ought to take his salary away. Well, let me give you my work. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's quiet in here now. Yeah, it's all gone now. Yeah, right. But anyway, what I'm trying to say is this. Hey, I'm excited. I'm not going to get to preach hardly at all in April, but that's okay. You got Earl Clarkson, John Mitchell. You got the choir. You got uh, Brother, uh, what's his name? Cloud. <laughs> I started to say snow. That would have been bad, wouldn't it, brother? I don't know why. I had snow stuck in my brain for some reason. But look, hey, they're going to be here. I'm excited about what God's going to do. I'm not upset because I'm not going to preach because I'll be preaching the rest of the summer. Because we'll be broke after all that. So we won't be able to afford to have anybody else in for a while. Hey, I'm just excited about what God's going to do because God does great things when you pray. That's why they're all listed in your prayer list. You take your prayer list home, you read it and pray over it every day, you're going to be praying for every one of these meetings every day. And we expect God to do great things. We need to pray in his name. A powerful prayer life hinges on asking in Jesus' name. To ask in Jesus' name, meaning that you're willing to submit to God's will and whatever the Lord thinks is best. That's why I didn't have to think twice. When Earl called, John called, I, the Lord's doing what he's got to do. Amen. I'm, it's not about me. It's about what the Lord wants to do. I don't know what the Lord thinks y'all need, but I expect y'all going to get a boatload of it in April. <laughs> it's on its way. It's coming. Praying in Jesus' name is recognizing that he has all power, all knowledge, and all wisdom, and all you need is his hand in your life. Praying is submitting to Christ. Now, praying is no uh, is, um, praying to no other entity will produce the power that praying to God will. Prayer matters. I know I've told, probably told this, but get over it and I'm going to tell it again. Uh, I think I told it in Bible study. I'm going to tell you all now. There was this student who was in this class, this professor, every year. He said, I want somebody to pray that when I drop this beaker, it won't hit the floor and bust. And he did it every year. Nobody ever prayed because everybody knew if he dropped that beaker on that floor, it was going to bust. Did I tell this in church or Bible study? Here. Okay. Well, I'm telling it again. Anyway, that's right, Ken. I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> that boy got up and he prayed, God, somehow, some way, stop it. And that thing slipped out of that professor's hand and hit his shoe and didn't break. Say amen. He never pulled that trick again. Why? Because when you pray to God, God can answer those prayers. Say amen. That's worth telling twice. Say amen. Lofty name, pray in his name. Now look at C the vivacity through his name. But, there, but these are written, John 20, 31, that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have what? Life through his name. People who aren't praying aren't living, but people who are praying are living the high life. Amen? They're living the high life. Praying in Jesus' name, living by his precepts and his principles, believing his promises. When we do these things faithfully, fully believing in our heart that uh, we have opened the door of opportunity in our life for God to bless us beyond belief and beyond measure. Every time you ought to pray, you ought to stop and say, I'm fixing to ask God to do something for me I can't do for myself. I'm fixing to open the door. God's going to do something. I'll be expecting. Paul, I'm sorry. I've got to have a charm store. She got mad the other day and took off and ran away from Wendy, and you don't do that to her. You run away from her, you in big trouble. So now every time Charm comes out to her, she's got a leash on. And Wendy walks her back and forth. So Wendy went and got her this morning. And I was sitting at my desk, and all of a sudden I heard that door, and I hear, dee, 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 and here comes Charm. And Charm comes, and she sits and puts her nose on the bag of, of bacon. She sits and puts her nose on the bag of bacon. And she's sitting there just looking, and that tale tells me the whole story. That thing doing just like that. She's anticipating. I'm going to open that bag, and I'm, I, I'm sorry, I'm, you've got to understand it's me. I ain't going to give her just one. I reach down and give her a whole handful. Say amen. 
and them eyes start getting real big and that tail starts moving real fast. <laughs> oh, she just can't stand. I said, Charms, she jumps up. Oh, Charms, sit down. And she knows she's not going to get that bacon until she sits down. And she puts that little hind end on the floor and I drop that thing of bacon. <laughs> Boy, she's in there and it's gone that fast. It's gone. But she, she is anticipating. She comes to our house, comes in our door, sits in my because she's anticipating something wonderful is going to happen. Every time we pray, we ought to expect God's fixing to do something big. But how many times we walk out the house of God and we leave something disordered, and before we leave the altar, we pick it back up and put it back in our brain and worry about it all the way out the door. And God says, you just shot it in the head. I can't help you. No, we got to leave it with him and expect him to do something awesome, to do something great. 1 Corinthians 2, 9, But it is as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Now, people don't read verse 10. You need to read verse 10. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. See, when God reveals something that you need to pray about something, he's trying to tell you, we need to talk about this thing. We need to put this thing up in the air. We need to let God do something about it. We need to yield to him when he tells us to pray. He says, for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. You know, some of us are going to be real sick when we get to heaven. Well, let's just be honest. We're all going to be sick when we get to heaven, and we find out what we could have done, and we didn't because we just didn't pray enough. We just didn't believe enough. We just didn't get into the deep things of God. Oh, listen, God's got some great things for you. you just believe him. All right, here's the last one. We're going home D. Glorify his name. 2 Thessalonians 1.12. That the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be what? Glorified. In you. That's not just the preacher. It's not just the Sunday school teacher. It's not just the deacon or the trustee. In you, personally, everybody in the church. And ye in him, according to the grace, that's the strength of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. When the Holy Spirit's leading and empowering you, like we just talked about in the last verse, we get the grace of God and he gets the glory. Both sides win. You may think you can't go through what you're going through and you can't do what God's asked you to do. Yes, you can. If you get God's grace and God's grace sinks in and it's your sufficiency, you know what's going to happen. Your life is going to glorify God. And that's what I want. I want God to be happy with me. I want God to be pleased with me. I want God to be happy with you and pleased with you. And if he is, there ain't no tellings what God can do. Say amen. Psalm 84, 11. For the Lord is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will be withheld from them that walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusteth in thee. And that word man means man and woman. Person. Hey, God, look, if it wasn't for the women, the church would fall in. It would. It would fall in. But God needs men and women. Say amen. Right. And God's promised that there's not any good thing. We've got some good things coming. I just wish I could tell you. Hang loose. We'll know in a few days. Good things coming. Good things happening. No good thing will God hold back from those who trust him. All right, here's the tickle verse. 2 Peter 3.18. But grow in grace. Grace is something that you don't just get one time. It comes in multiple waves when you need it. Grace is like vitamin C. It comes when you need it. It comes when you need it. And in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to know who he is, know he's almighty, he's omniscient, he's omnipresent, he's all loving, he's all kind. To him, Christ, be glory both now and forever. What? And what does amen mean? Let it, be so. Let it be so. I'm begging you tonight. Take up the challenge. Look at your life tonight and say, okay, 
And look, I'm not trying to be ugly or disparaging. I'm just being honest. We all tonight need to say our prayer life's not what it ought to be because it's not. Just go and admit it. Say, now, Lord, what can I do to make my prayer life stronger so my service life will be better, that I might shine your light and glorify you wherever I go? It's time to take up the challenge. Say amen. amen. It's time to take up the challenge. And if you take the challenge, God's going to show you things that you just never anticipated seeing. And there are great days ahead for those who believe. Stand to your feet. Father, I, I preach as best I know how tonight. I pray it's helped these dear folks. I pray they know your lofty name. I pray they'll pray in your name. I pray the vastity are living through your name. Lord, they'll live the best life, the most glorifying life possible through your name. And Lord, your life will in the end glorify his name. And the whole world won't see us, but it'll see Jesus who saved us. And they'll say, how in the world did God use that thing to do anything? Because we submitted to you and we surrendered to you and we've served you. We've trusted you. We've believed you. we spoke to you in prayer. God, help us tonight. Help every Christian, whether they come kneel, stand, or sit. Just come to the altar tonight and just say, Lord, help me have a better prayer life. Help me be more faithful to you. Help me, Lord, open the doors of opportunity by just praying and believing that you're able to do far above all that we ask or think. Lord, help us be soul winners. Help us be the encouragers of the brethren. Help us, Lord, to be lights in a dark world. And, Lord, when you come back, may we hear those wonderful words. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy. Amen.